Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Look with me for a moment from a phrase that I lifted from one of the poems I love of Sir John Donne. Death, be not proud. Death, be not proud. The phrase, death be not proud, is from the first line of a sonnet written by 16th century poet and English cleric who was made dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, Sir John Donne. He employs the poetic device of irony and personification to illustrate to people that are afraid of death of the truism that death is merely a journey. It is a short rest before reaching the afterlife. So John Donne talks to death as if it were a person, shaming death for being proud of itself. Donne refers to death, brothers and sisters, as an apostrophe. Not the mark of punctuation that's an apostrophe, but apostrophe as a figure of speech. The word apostrophe comes from the ancient Greek and literally means turning away. It involves the speaker or the writer addressing an inanimate object or an abstract idea by turning its his or her back on what they're talking about as if what they are speaking of is an abstraction or does not really exist. Our modern day preacher poet, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. put death in bolder relief when he said death is not a period which ends this great sentence of life but rather a comma which punctuates it to more lofty significance. Dr. King said, death is not a blind alley which leads into a state of nothingness, but rather an open door which leads to life eternal. Robert Ingersoll, who was not a believer, said life is a narrow veil between the barren peaks of two eternities, birth and death. Dr. Gardner C. Taylor, who went to be with the Lord at the age of 96, closed the chasm that Ingersoll could not span. Dr. W. Franklin Richardson made mention to me that when Dr. Taylor learned of the death of Dr. T.J. Jemison and other great pulpit luminaries, Dr. Taylor's response was always good for him. Good for him. 
Apparently, we Christians, many of us have a problem with death. We use many euphemisms to sanitize and disinfect this matter called death. We say so and so has expired or he or she has passed away. If you're from Louisiana, they kick the bucket. Or if you're from Texas or Oklahoma, they've gone to the Ponderosa. Or if you're from California, they've moved to the great beyond. And if you're in my family, you never talk about death. You say, if something happens to me. My sister says that all the time. If something happened to me. I say, you mean if you get in a car wreck or uh, if you break your leg, that's something happening to you. What are you, what are you really talking about? She said, well, if something happened to me, this is what I want to happen. I said, no, no, no. Let's talk about this something happening to you. And I want to say to do, those of us here this morning who call it kicking the bucket or passing on or expired or gone to the Ponderosa or going to the great beyond or something happened to you, let me give you an arresting statistic. If the Lord Jesus delays his coming, one out of every one of us in here this morning is going to die. Put it in your phone, put it on your day planner, put it on your schedule. You might, you might cancel your beauty shop appointment. You might cancel your nail appointment. You might cancel your massage. You might cancel your eye doctor. You might cancel your appointment with your, with your, with your gynecologist. But put this on your schedule. If Jesus does not come soon, you and I are going to die. I don't care how pretty you are, I don't care how fine you are, I don't care how young you are, how old you are, all of us have an appointment with death. But for the Christian, death is not the grim reaper. For the child of God, death is transportation. Death carries us from one side to the other side. Listen, I could fall asleep tonight and not wake up in the morning on this side. I'm going to wake up in the morning either on this side or on the other side because to be absent from the body, I wish I had a Bible reader, is to be present with the Lord. We know that if this earthly house, I wish I had two or three more witnesses, of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have another building. A house not made with hands, but eternal in the heaven. We used to sing it when I was a boy. There's a leak in this old building. And my soul has got to move. Let me see if I can help somebody this morning. Um, all you have, all I have, is a lease agreement. This, this house, this body that I'm living in, that you are living in, all you have is a lease agreement. And one day the landlord is going to come and say to you that your lease is up. And it would be tragic to have to move with no forwarding address. But when this life is over, I wish I had a believer here. 
when I'm through struggling down here, I have another place to go. I have a house not made with hands because I am a child of God. Um, apparently, some of the Corinthians had come to doubt the resurrection. And the apostle devotes an entire chapter, 58 verses, to reassure them and us that the resurrection of Jesus is a real event and his resurrection from the dead can give us victory in our day-to-day -day life. Victory over what, brother pastor? We Christians have victory over death. Let me, let, let me say something to us that hopefully you're going to go on talking about. Fear of death is heathenism. Fear of death is heathenism. Not Christianity. Because in the Old Testament, death was called the king of terror. But in the New Testament, death is called sleep. That's why when I'm gone, they're not bringing me to a graveyard because that's for dead people. I'm going to a cemetery because the very word cemetery means sleeping place. When I die, I'm just falling asleep. I wish I had some help to preach it. I'm, I'm, I'm not dead, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping in that you can't wake me up. But when the trumpet sound, the dead in Christ shall be raised first. I wish I had some help to preach it. And those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. We shall be raptured, caught up, change in the twinkling of an eye the scripture says two will be sleeping in a bed one will disappear and one will remain two will be working in a field one will disappear and one will remain I like talking about the two people in scripture who did not taste death. One was Elijah, caught up in a chariot of fire. But the one I really like talking about is Enoch. I need two or three more Bible readers. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. And he was not because God took it. One day Enoch and God was just walking and talking and, and having a good time like they did every day. And then God said, since you're closer to where I live than to where you live, won't you just come on and go with me? And God took it. One day I just want to be taken. I know that ain't good English, but that's good Baptist talk. I want to just be taken one day. I want to just be doing what I'm doing, and the Lord just took me. I'm going home because I want to be closer to where he lives, in my father's house. A mini mansion. If it were not so, I would have told you. I 
go. That's Jesus talking now. To prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you will be also. Um, Christ overcame death and has conquered the grave by his resurrection and brought life and immortality to light by the gospel. Paul said, I've delivered unto you first that which I have also received. How he was crucified and died one Friday according to the scripture. How he was buried according to the scripture. How he rose on the third day according to the scriptures and Paul said he called me an apostle born out of due time to preach to you the resurrection I am not even qualified he says to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God here it is but by the grace of God I am what I am and everybody here who's been saved this morning don't brag on how moral you are don't brag on how pious and righteous and scripturally literate you are because all it takes is a moment and any one of us can fall into sin but by the grace of God I am what I am Don't, don't, don't you just, don't you just want to scream when you talk to these people who, who answer their phone, praise the Lord. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm too blessed to be stressed. And they got a fish on their bumper. And, and they're always listening to gospel music. And, and, and you can't raise your voice around them because their, their, their halo might fall off. And, 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 and that's why they cover themselves up so tight because their wings might be exposed. That, that's got to be a, a miserable confining cold, lifeless, dead kind of life. Because you can't appreciate grace until you've been a liar. You, you can't appreciate grace until you've sinned so wickedly that the Lord had to cover you with his blood and when you come here on Sunday morning, you ain't shouting because you got it right all the week long last week. You come here shouting because you messed up, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I should have been dead. I deserve to be dead but mercy grace surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life I wish I had some noise right here yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I got somebody with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me. 
in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head because listen, I don't know who my enemies are. They look like my friends. They talk like my friends. They laugh and grin in my face like my friends. But I don't know who my enemies That's why I need a shepherd. Who can prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and then he anoints my head with oil so that my cup is running over I, I, I need a I need a witness here who get happy when it ain't Sunday You, you don't even have to be in church. You, 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 you just start thinking about how many doors he's opened. How many tears he's dried. How many ways he's made. How much he led you around that you could have fallen into, but he kept you. He never left you. And it's just Wednesday and you start shouting about his goodness. Let me, let me, let me, let me testify before I move on. Sometime when I, when I, when I turn the ignition in my car, I think about the little, the little Buick Century I used to have. That, that they, they knew it was me coming down the street. Because it smoked so much. They thought I was the mosquito man spraying for mosquito. And, and then I had to park it where I didn't have to back up because my transmission was gone. And then looked like it had a mind of its own. If I left it idling, it just take off by itself. And I had to dive in the, the driver's window to stop it. But look where. I, I, I had that little black and white 13 inch television with some foil paper on the, on, on the antenna. I wish I had somebody to help me. And, and my knob was broke, so I had to get a pair of pliers. I, I couldn't afford cable, so I, I just had three channels. But look where the Lord... I need one or two more witnesses here who can remember that all you had was one pair of shoes. All you had was one good suit of clothes. But now you open your closet and got to make up your mind what you're going to put on. Down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Yeah. I've got the victory over death. I've got the victory in verse 56 over deception. The sting of death is sin and the strength or the power of sin is the law. And, and when you look at sin and the law, it terrifies you because you know that because of your sin and because you can't keep the law, you're hopeless. But if in this life only we have hope, we are among all men 
most miserable. Sin is the reason Jesus came in the world. He lived and he died on the cross. And it is his death that delivers us from our sins because he paid the price for sin with his own blood. And if the power of death arises from sin, then the only way it can be done away is by the expiation and forgiveness of sin and sin must be atoned for if death is to be destroyed. Sin gave death a sting and the sting of death pierces, pains, and poisons. The power of sin pierces. The guilt of sin is painful. And the pollution and defilement of sin is poison. But Jesus took the sting. I, I, I was trying to save this till I got to the end of the sermon. But I, I shared it with the brothers in, in the back in our consecration. My daughter, Victoria, is afraid of anything that moves or crawls that's not a person. She's scared of spiders. She's scared of roaches, wasps, bees, worms, anything that squirms, moves, crawls that's not a human. She's afraid of it. As bad as she try to think she is, <laughs> she'll call me at 10.30 at night to come get a dead roach out of her house. I said, Victoria is dead. Oh, dead. <laughs> I got to get up out of my house and go get a dead roach. She's, she's been that way all of her life. When she was a small child, about four, maybe five years old, we were sitting outside and a wasp came around and she jumped in my neck and almost squeezed my eyes out of the socket. And I said, what's, what's the matter? She said, dad, it's a wasp, it's a wasp. And I saw the wasp flying around and I grabbed it and it stung me in my hand. And when I opened my hand, I showed her the stinger. And I said, it can't bother you now. Because the stinger is in my hand. One Friday, on a hill called Calvary. <laughs> Jesus took the sting out of death and said, oh death, where is your sting? Grave, where's your victory? You wanna know where the sting of death is? Jesus just got to open his hand. He died. Didn't he die? And when he died, he took the sting out of death and robbed the grave of its victory. And so I've got the victory over death. I've got the victory over deception. Never, the next time you go to the funeral of a Christian, that's deception you're looking at. They fooling you. They ain't dead. They just sleeping. And one of these days, you, you're going to read in the Houston Chronicle, 
in the obituary column yeah. that Terry Anderson is dead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a misprint. Yeah. That's deception. Yeah. I'll be more alive then yeah. than I've ever been before. Yeah. I will drop this mantle of flesh, step out of the narrow circumscriptions of time and into the illimitable expanses of eternity. When life's fitful fever is ended, I will not be dead. I'm going to sleep. You can't get mad with a man who's worked all day who wants some sleep. Somebody ought to help me talk here. When I've borne my burdens in the heat of the day, when my life is ended, I want to go to sleep. If you miss me from singing down here and you can't find me nowhere, come up to bright glory. I'll be singing up there. I have victory over death. I have victory over deception, but I have victory also, finally, over damnation. It's right here in the text. But, thanks be to God, who just gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't, we, we don't deserve it. We didn't do anything to earn it. We will never be good enough to merit it. Because of the death of Christ and our belief in his finished work on the cross, he just gives us the victory. And when somebody gives you something that you don't deserve, you ought to have sense enough to just say thank you. I know what I deserve, but thank you for your grace. I know what I got coming to me, but thank you for your grace. I know what should have happened to me, but thank you for your grace. Do you know what could have happened to you between last Sunday and this one? Somebody ought to help me preach. You, you, you don't know how many cars God slowed down to keep from running into you. You, you, you don't know what was going on while you were sleeping outside your house. I, I know you had your alarm system on and I know you got burglar bars, but, but, but God kept you. You slept soundly last night because the death angel was flying over the city of Houston. But your house was covered. Not, not, not by a burglar system, but covered by the blood of Christ. I wish I had a believer here. Because some people better by nature than we are did not wake up this morning. But God woke us up. And then God got us to his house safely on the interstate and then brought us to our particular seat in the sanctuary. You could have dropped dead as soon as you got out of your car. Or you could have walked in this church and died in the vestibule. Or you could have sit down in your pew, spoke to somebody, close your eyes and never wake up again. God's just been good to us. Every move I make, Every step I take is by the goodness and the mercy of God Almighty. You need to tell some super saint next to you who's trying to act all holy and they, they haven't opened their mouth since they've been in the sanctuary. They've never sung any of the songs that we sang this morning. They didn't clap. They didn't move from side to side. They didn't give God glory. They didn't put their head down during devotion. You need to let them know that if it was not for God's goodness, if it were not for God's mercy, if it were not for the fact that he looked beyond my faults 
and saw my needs. God's been good to me. I need one or two more believers to help me close here. I know you were waiting for me to get to verse number 58. You probably thought I forgot about verse number 58. But I didn't forget about verse number 58. There's a whole lot of shouting in verse 58. But you got to read verse 50 on down before you can shout about verse number 58. Because in verse number 50, it starts out by, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye for the trumpet of God shall sound and when this mortal has put on immortality and when this corruptible has put on incorruption then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death has been swallowed up in victory oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ here it comes therefore whenever you see the word therefore you ought to want to know what it's there for here is what it's there for you got to read on up into chapter 15 if there be no resurrection of the dead then we have died in vain our faith is in vain our preaching is in vain and we are among all men most miserable but thank you Jesus he died on a hill called Calvary and his death was sufficient for God getting a ransom for our sins what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus I need a believer here this morning who know what the word therefore is therefore therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast that word steadfast means just be seated unmovable that word unmovable just means be firm always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord you're gonna help me close this won't you sometimes it's hard to be Christian sometimes it's difficult when the road is rough and the going gets tough and it looks like everybody's getting ahead of you and everybody's doing better than you are doing and everybody's life seems to be on a keel that your life is not on you look at them on Facebook and they look so good and look like life is just going their way and then you look at them on TikTok and it looked like they're just having such a good time but that's one day out of 365 days you don't know how much hell they've had those other days you don't know how mean they've been those other days you don't know how ugly life has been for them those other days but you ought to thank God that you have life and you have life more abundantly you ought to thank God you have peace that surpasses all understanding you ought to thank God that you have joy that no money can purchase you might not live where they live you might not drive what they drive but when it's all over we've got to stand before the same judgment seat we've got to meet the same God and if you live right you shall receive your reward 
If you trust God, he'll make a way out of no way. I need a believer here right now. I need a serious Christian right now who's had some good days and some bad days. You've had some sunshiny days. You've had some rainy days. You've had some warm days. You've had some cold days. You've had some happy days. You've had some days of depression. But through it all, God kept you. Through it all, God made a way for you. Through it all, through it all, through it all, God's been good to you. If you don't mind testifying, if you don't mind being a witness, make some signs that God has made a way for you. Why don't you make a sign that God has shown up right when you needed him? Why don't you make some sign that God turned it around just in the nick of time? Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy's down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been me. Outdoors with no food and no clothes, all left alone without a friend, just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. I'm saved by your power and you keep on, 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 hey, you keep on keeping me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know he's all right. But there's some folk in here like me who've crossed over 50 years old and the longest end of the rope is behind you now. And what you're looking forward to is that great getting up on. Trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eye we'll follow till we die we'll understand it better by and by by and by by and by, by and by, by and by, by, by and by, when the morning comes. We'll tell the story. 
power we've overcome but we will understand it better it gets rough out here it gets hard sometimes but some glad morning when this life is over and one day it's going to be over I'm going to fly away and be at rest the Bible says there's no weeping there there's no mourning there there's no tears there for God himself shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and John said I saw a city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven like a bride dressed up for her husband and God was seated on the throne with a rainbow around his shoulder to absorb some of the light of his presence so that the saints might be able to behold his face and he said I saw all of them coming from the north and the south and the east and the west and they had on white robes crowns on their heads reeds in their hand and John said I asked the elder who are they the elder said these are they who've come through the tribulation and they have washed their robes in the blood of the lamb as our brother stand this morning if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins you are lost and on your way to hell but you don't have to go to hell this morning you can turn around and come to meet this Jesus of whom I speak if you don't have a pastor if you don't have brothers and sisters in Christ we invite you to become a part of Lily Grove Church we want you to be a part of our family this is your opportunity to do it right now. Come on today. Some glad morning when I fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I see you coming, God bless you. A few more. Just a few more. Weary. Come on, that's right. God bless you. Fly away to a home. A home on God's celestial shore. the shadows of this life have grown when the shadows of this life have grown like a bird from prison bars have flown like a bird from prison bars have flown hallelujah
Just a few more weary days and then Joy shall never end. Ah. Oh, ah. privileged me God has privileged me to be in the room when several members of my family have crossed over to the other side the first person I saw die was my father I was, I was standing by the bed and he opened his eyes and closed them and he was no more. And I thought in that moment, the next time he opens his eyes, the first face he'll see is Jesus Christ. I was, I was, I was at the bed. I, I, all my other brothers and sisters had left the room. When my mother was transitioning over at MD Anderson before they brought her to hospice, only she and I were in the room and she called me her little boy and I called her my little girl. And I said, little girl, you want me to sing to you? And I sang her to sleep. When my oldest brother died, he had a massive stroke. And Johnny and I were in Hawaii. And my sister-in-law and his children thought that because of Johnny and I came in the room, he started to move. I said, baby, that's just, in, that's just involuntary movement. He's gone. And I watched him take his last breath. I was there when my brother Lee transitioned. I prayed for him. I held his hand. And he opened his eyes and looked at me with such a loving look. And then he breathed his last. I went to see Carl and held his hand prayed for him. I came back to Houston, got the word the next morning that he was gone. All of them sleep the long sleep. Every time I go home, I go to the grave and visit them because I hardly go home now because all I have there almost is graves. But one day there will be a reunion. I'm not talking about a family reunion at a park or at some civic center. I'm talking about a place where we'll never grow old. No sickness, no death, no pain, no crying, for the former things are passed away. Paul said we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, I will know, even as also I am known. There's some mysteries that God has just kept to himself. But when we see him, when he gives me my crown, I'm going to give it right back to him. And then we're going to crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you don't know him this morning, the bad news is you're lost and on your way to hell. But the good news is he died for your sins and he rose for your justification. And if you believe in the Son of God, the Bible says that's enough to save you. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, He'll save you, the scripture says, to the utmost. You won't need no more saving after he get through with you. 
Every time I think about that save to the utmost, it looked like every birthday I caught a whipping. Because either I jumped on Johnny or, or somebody came to my party and didn't have a present, I just jumped on them. And my mama said, when I get through with you, you ain't gonna need a whipping for a long time. And, and she was telling the truth. My birthday was in June. It wasn't until about October that I needed another whipping. Because my mother could have given classes on how to discipline. People in our neighborhood would say, may I do, I, I, I whip him but it don't do no good. She said, you ain't doing it right. Bring him over here. And they would leave sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. When God saves, there's no more need for salvation. Everything needed was accomplished on the cross. Jesus said, it is finished. Not I am finished. It is finished. What I came to accomplish is done. Salvation, brothers and sisters, finally, is not about what you do. It's about what's been done. Jesus died and God raised him from the dead and he's right now on the right hand of God with power and he ever lives to make intercession for us. Just a few more weary days and has been extended to you and as always it is yours either to receive or to reject let's give God the glory for these who have joined our church today